Good morning, everyone. Those who are watching us from far and nearby, across Uganda, out Uganda, we want to thank God for this day that he has made for us. And the day that he has made for me and you to rejoice and to be glad in it. You're welcome to Lifeline Ministries Kampala International. Hallelujah. We want to thank God that he has given you the grace to live a life of today. He has given you a miracle. You are breathing. That's a miracle. How many people has gone last night? But this morning you're waking up, you're breathing, you're walking, and you're sitting in your living room, you're walking to your office. How wonderful and precious to be alive at church a time like this. We are in the month of July, and thank God that he has made you to accomplish what he wants you to accomplish in this month of July that you are rich. Today is the 18th of July. To God be the glory that you are alive. Amen. Uh, call me Pastor Florence Aloyo. I'm the service leader of today. And want to honor God for all of you that you are attending the live streaming. To God be the glory. I know that today you will be blessed and you will not regret in anything that is going to take place. You will thank God and you will be wishing that I wish the service will continue always like this. Amen. So may you lift up your hands and just thank God in your own words. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God that you are able to watch live streaming. Thank God that surely he has provided, he has made you alive. Just bless him, bless him. Just be happy for the Holy Spirit. Be happy and say that I welcome you. I love you, sweet Holy Spirit. You have done great and mighty things in my life. Say you are everything. You are everything. I hold you with my life. Take over, take complete control. Lead me and guide me in this day. Tell him to use you and tell him to keep you, keep you. Let him keep you, let him keep you. And order your footstep. He said he ordered the footstep of the righteous. Tell God that this week as you begin a new week. He will order your footstep. His face will shine upon you. You will find favor. You will prosper in each and every step. Whatever word you speak. It shall come to pass. Because you are a child of God. Ordained of God. Anointed of God. And blessed of the Lord. To subdue nations. According to his word Isaiah 45. You shall subdue nations because he has anointed your head. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship and we honor you. To you be the glory. We open this service in Jesus' precious mighty name. We prayed and we said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to read you, see you at the top, by our bishop, the presiding bishop of Level and Ministries, Dr. Julius Peter Oyet. Amen. I say today is the 18th of July. Our theme of today, if I see you at the top, it says, Godly portraits of a praying Christian. I don't know how you're viewing yourself, but this theme is for me and you. It says, wisdom from the word. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and walks righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Amen. He who does not backbite with his tongue nor does evil to his neighbor nor does he take up a reproach against his friend in whose eyes a veiled person is despised but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own heart and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Amen. Psalms 15 verse 1 to 5. It continues saying, What qualities should every Christian possess. Psalms 15. Finishes us with a list of many of the necessary traits. traits. David pictures a godly child of God as one who possesses integrity. Number two. 
does not participate in gossip. Number three, does not harm others, speaks out against wrong. Number four, honors others who walk in truth, keeps their word even at personal cost, isn't greedy to gain at the expense of others, and is strong and stable. Amen. If you want great results, you need good people with great talent and are on some attitudes. Amen. Why saying, if you do not conquer self, you will be conquered by self. Noplin Hill. See you at the top by Dr. Julius Peter Oyet. Give a hand of praise to Jesus. A better, a better, a better. Hallelujah. As we seek to worship God, I want you to examine yourself with this word. Godly portraits of a praying Christian. Amen. Let's invite choir, voice of healing, life life ministry, Kampala International. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everyone. This Sunday, praise the Lord. There is no one like our God in all the earth. And that's a beautiful thought. There is no God like our God. And so, as we come and worship Him today, let's ponder on that, yeah, that... God stands alone. He actually sits on the throne alone. So, whatever name may be exalted right now, it is not higher than our Lord. Amen. And there is none like you. No one else can touch this heart like you do. Search for all eternity, God, and find that there is none like you. There is none, there is none.
good to us. We worship you. Yes, for you are great, oh God. You are awesome in this place, oh God. We worship you, Father. We worship you, oh God. Father, receive our praise. Receive our worship, oh God. For we are empty without you, oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just lift your hand to the That you do a safety yourself, oh God. You shall revive us, oh God. You shall awaken us, oh God. You shall so forth your favor again upon us, oh God. As a nation, oh God, across the globe, across the world, you are touching each and every one, oh God. You are causing turn around, oh God. You are changing everything, oh God Almighty. For thy sake, oh God Almighty. For those who call upon your name, oh God Almighty, they find refuge in your hands, oh Lord. For that we want to say thank you. We bless you and we worship you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Your name is lifted and exalted. We want to say thank you. Oh, sweet spirit of God, we love you. We want to say thank you. May you touch us as the point of our needs. May you embrace us, Lord. May you fill us with the joy. May you fill us with the peace as we go to hear your word. May your word give comfort. May your word give healings, Lord. May your word strengthen and restore lives, O God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the powerful word that will cause turn around. We want to say thank you. To you be the glory and honor. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we pray and the children of God said, Amen, Amen, Amen. We want to thank God again for you. 
It is a moment that we are going to invite the man of God. But let's appreciate the men of God that are around, across the nation. Just appreciate. We appreciate God for all the Lifeline Ministries leaders, the coordinators, the international division heads. Wherever you are, cross the world, we thank God for sustaining you, for keeping you alive. For he is our lift our head, our Lifeline. To God be the glory for sustaining you. Let's appreciate God for our lead pastor, Pastor Moses, the lead pastor of Lifeline Ministries Kampala. We thank God for you, Pastor. We bless the name of the Lord and your family. And here with us, we have our very own, our bishop, our papa, our mentor, Dr. Julius Peter Oyet in the house. And he is the man of God that God has chosen today to deliver the word of God unto the nation. Let's bless the name of God and welcome the man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessings. Come on, bless the name of the Lord with me and let's praise his name together. The home of breakthrough, raising champions and taking territories. What a joy to be alive in the days of God's power. Jesus is on the throne. Say with me the seven secrets of unstoppable passion. The seven secrets of unstoppable passion. One more time again. The seven secrets of unstoppable passion. I'm reading from John chapter 17 and verse 4 and 5. John 17, 4 and 5. Jesus speaking to his Father. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, oh Father, glorify me with you, with the glory which I had with you before the world began. My mouth is singing of a pen of a writer. My tongue will clip not to my roof because I sing the orations and the blessings of the King. My heart rejoices in my God, my Savior. He has heard my prayers that I would declare His love and His word and His glory. The seven secrets of unstoppable passion. Who has suffocated your passion? Who has been able to reduce the blue flame from inside you? The greatest weapon on earth is not artillery, it's not poison, it's not corona. The greatest force and power on the earth is not anything made in the human factory. The most powerful weapon on earth is a blue flame in the belly of mankind. Passion has changed the world. Passion has raised ordinary to become extraordinary passion. It's what made Jesus to be what He is and what He will always be. Passion rules the entire earth. The passion of Jesus changed the world. Jesus was passionate about pleasing His Father. Jesus was passionate about helping people. Jesus was passionate about teaching His prodigies. Jesus was passionate about healing the sick, raising the dead, causing miracles. Jesus was passionate about defending righteousness like Jeremiah was and Elijah. Jesus was passionate about asking and answering questions. Jesus was passionate about learning. He even posed for mentorship. When he was 12 years of age, he came to the bourgeoisie of his day, the wise men of his days. He sat at their feet. He was passionate about wisdom. Jesus Christ, with his passion, changed the world. The prayer that he prayed, which I read in John 17, line 4 and 5, tells us that, Father, I wish you could give me more. I have finished the work that you have given me to do. I'm coming back to you. If I had not finished the assignment, Father, I would be running on. The blue flame inside your belly is able to make you achieve anything. And as the saying goes, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it will achieve. Passion is a powerful force. Passion is able to make us leap over walls. Jesus, our supreme example, as our master shepherd, he kept his passion alive throughout his life. 
in the midst of criticisms, in the midst of endless disrespect and hatred, even when those around him doubted his anointing and his assignment, when they call him a son of Allah and a friend of Thebes, that did not discourage him. Many of us today, just a little bit of a text message, a call, or some hearing some rumors, how our passions and our desires and our zeal are quenched and burnt out. But I want to ask today that you will be able to keep your passion. Secret number one, passion creates legion. Say that with me. Passion creates legion. Say it again. Out of many sportsmen around the world, I admire the late Muhammad Ali. He had passion for boxing. And uh, one time he said that uh, as long as he would stay long enough in the ring and not move out of the ring, he would wear out his opponents and they would give up on him and he would win. The legions like Muhammad Ali, the more legions like uh, Tiger Hood, men and women in the, in the fields of sport, you know, in tennis, unforced errors, the more you eliminate unforced errors and having the passion just to go on and go on and eliminate the unforced errors, you will definitely win. I praise the name of the Lord today that you will carry the passion that will make you become a legend because passions create legends. The second secret about passion is passion is the key to receiving the finisher's anointing. Come on, say it with me. Passion is the key to receiving the finisher's anointing. Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have won the race. I have conquered a great crown awaits me. Paul was able to use his binoculars and look ahead. He says, I look ahead and I see great, great crown. Because of passion, one time when a prophet told Agabus, told Paul that the honor of this belt shall be beaten and left for dead, Paul's passion was able to face them and say, why break my heart? I'm not only willing to be beaten in Jerusalem, I am willing to die for the sake of the gospel. I have told the people around the world, I'll preach this gospel until my last breath. The two things I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about wisdom. I'm passionate about freedom. Freedom. I want to be free in all ways. Economic freedom. Spiritual freedom. All kinds of freedom. So that I am not told that you can't do this. I do not like people telling me, you can't achieve this. You can't do this. You can't make this. You can't be this. I want the freedom that is able to make me achieve anything I desire to do. And that's why I love learning. I love reading. I love pursuing wisdom because I need freedom. Freedom is a great thing. Passion will always give you the finisher's anointing. Anointing that will make you touch something and stay on course until you are able to finish it. The anointing that will not make you just run for a few minutes and say, I'm tired. The anointing that makes you be able to cling, the clinger's anointing, that finishes anointing. Oh yes, I pray that every one of us will desire that finishes anointing. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, give me the finishes anointing. Through my passion, I will create. The passion in me will make me receive the finisher's anointing. Hallelujah. The finisher's anointing is a powerful anointing. The anointing on Daniel, the anointing on Joseph, the anointing on Jesus, the anointing on many of these wonderful heroes of our faith. The third secret of the of passion, number three. Passion creates history makers. Come on, say that with me. Passion creates history makers. One more time again. Passion is the hidden volcano in the hearts of many, many powerful men and women of God. I have watched Lance Armstrong, the young man from France who overcame cancer and after defeating cancer, repeatedly he 
has been the world champion number one of cycle riding bicycle from France to West Africa, Tour de France. That man can ride a bike on top of the mountain. That man can ride a back bike is like even the people who are driving kind of struggle reaching with him. Lance Armstrong is one of my celebrated heroes because he is a history maker. The men and women who climb Mount Everest, these are history makers. The men that have gone to the moon and come back, these are history makers. I have a program called Kingdom History Makers that I will be able to raise many, many, many young people and old people who dare to say, I risk my life to break record of something that nobody else has ever done on earth. Passion will make you become a history maker. Number four, passion define the great prophet. Say that with me. Passion defined the great prophet. Say it again. Prophet Isaiah was one of the most unique ones. He did what you and I will not be able to do. When God told him to walk naked for three years, he said, God, that is easy. I was born that way. He said, Father, I won't struggle with that. I just imagine I'm just coming out of my mother right now. For three years, the guy was in the streets of Jerusalem, the streets of Israel. Passion made him do that. You see, when you have the passion, nothing is ugly, nothing is impossible, nothing is questionable. You just have 100% loyalty to the instruction of God. Passion. Define the great prophets. The great prophets that even if they knew they were going to prison, they would dare go to prison. The men and women of God that would know even if they're going to the lion's den, they would not doubt it. They would face the fire. Passion is responsible for defining major and minor prophets. I pray in our days we will have men and women of passion. You know, I've been thinking a lot about Africa. And I'm saying, and this message is not targeting any nation and a president. I'm talking to the leadership in Africa. Not just the spiritual leadership only, not just the political leadership, but whoever calls yourself a leader, including me. How long shall we be helped? Her great, 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 great grandfathers were helped. Her great, great grandfathers were helped. Our great grandfathers were helped. Our fathers were helped. We are being helped. And we also want our children to be helped. How about, for instance, if one African president or country would come up and say, we are summoning and calling all these African scientists. We will keep them for six months or two years. We'll feed them, we'll pay them salaries. They make research to come out with Corona vaccine. Why should we be importing Corona vaccine? The ones that clot our blood and become magnets and people are putting light bulbs on the spot of vaccination and it's lighting. Keys are getting stuck. The president of America, Joe Biden, said we're making over 40 million doses of vaccine to ship to Africa. And it's not supposed to be used in Europe or in America, but only supposed to be used in Africa. Why should we die like guinea pigs? I'm asking. And I am not blaming an individual, I'm blaming all of us. And that's why some of us are becoming problem solvers. We are able to create quite a lot. But when you create something big, the government begins to consider you almost like an opposition passion in many countries in Africa. Like in the olden days, the British used to cut the hands of the black if you're creative. Those days must be gone. Our passions must be back. That we 
Africans will be able to be problem solvers. We create solutions for African problems right here in Africa. I declare, let that passion rise in everyone that dares to listen to me. There's nothing wrong with our brain. There's nothing wrong with our hands, with our hearts, where our feet can reach. Most of the top sports people around the world in many fields are Africans. And we got to believe this. And we declare and I proclaim this day. Let the passion rise and fill the heart of young and old African people. Let the scientists of Africa be able to come up with the vaccines that can help Africa. Not just importing everything. I want to declare it is not the right time to receive all these donations from World Bank and from all United Nations and from this and the other because we can raise the things locally here. I declare it again and again. Africa, arise! Help yourself other than being helped. Help yourself. I hate begging. And that's why our ministry, we don't believe in getting hate from the West and from the rest. We get from ourselves. We believe our solutions can come from within us. Hallelujah. Can I hear a big amen? Number five, passion made great men to denounce their families. Many, many, many people denounce their loved ones, denounce their party and government, denounce a system that does not work. Why stick to something that will kill you? When bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem from the Philistines and from the house of Obed-Edom, King David exercised his passion for the presence of God. His wife Michal despised him. This made David to denounce this woman, reject her for life. And the Bible said she died buried. Passion is a powerful force. Number six, passion turns common men to uncommon men. Say that with me. Passion turns common men to uncommon men. Saul of Tarsus was such a common man. And the Bible says in Acts 7, 58, and the witness laid down the clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. But later on, we begin to see, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended all. I count all my achievement as loss, as dark. He became poor and was able to push through because passion turns a common man to uncommon common man to uncommon man. Number seven and finally, completing your assignment on earth will require an uncommon passion. Say that with me. Completing my assignment on the earth will require an uncommon passion. One of the messages that has blessed my life when I worked on it is 12 keys to increase your self-confidence. I worked on that message not long ago. 12 keys to increase self-confidence. The world is negative. The world is a whirlwind of negativity. Negativity surrounds us everywhere, especially from loved ones in our homes, in our countries. This opposition, just like Jesus says, a man's enemy will be the member of his house or his room. And so unless you are able to develop your passionate self-confidence, you will not be able to finish your assignment. Look at assignment like Kingdom City. Look at assignment like 300 companies. The people in government will tell you, we can't do this. Somebody in big organization will tell you, we cannot do this. Somebody laughs at you and say, who do you think you are? If we as government cannot do this, how can you achieve this? But you know the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. Let me sign up by telling you this. And I believe you will, you will honor the Lord for this. Anything in your life, the value of anything in your life, that value is determined by the passion holding it. You haven't got it yet. Let me get it right on your head. You see, if I pick a small piece of stone, it's just a slingshot. There's no price for it. It will just be 5,000 shillings or 2,000 or 1,000 or 500 shillings. Nothing. Just $2. But that same small stone, put it in the hands of David. The value is changed. It can kill a Goliath. 
listen to me. You can pick a small piece of wood, a small stick in your hand, and you hold it. You can't sell it for any amount of money. But put that stick in the hands of Moses. It will depart the Red Sea. It will knock the rock and water will come out. You go to a golf club and buy a golf you know, a, a golf club, a small stick for knocking that golf ball. It is a small little $25. But give it in the hands of Tiger Hood. That small piece of hood is changed into $80 million. What it matters is who is holding it. I am saying my vision and my passion, I am putting it in the hands of God. The value God has put in my hand is a trillion dollars somebody got to glorify God you look at me and what I don't have I look at me and what God has given to me is able to make a miracle your passion will be able to make you fulfill your desire and your dream but what you need to understand is you need to develop your self confidence oh yes if you don't believe in somebody believe in God and believe in yourself Jesus says believe in God, believe in me also. I declare that God has put trillions of brain wires in your head. Every single day, 60,000 new thoughts pass through your mind. You are wired for success. You are an incredible warehouse of success. Keep going, be bold, and never forget to pursue, proclaim, and to publish wisdom. God bless you. Your passion will make you succeed in Jesus' mighty name.